Six horrifying and nightmarish monsters from Insidious Horror Film Series. When you think back to some of the most successful horror films in the past decade, the Insidious franchise stands tall and proud, being one of the scariest series, delivering nightmare-inducing movies one after the other. These movies will definitely scare you enough that you'll worry about going to sleep and the horrors that await in your dreams. The first film in the franchise depicts the terrifying obstacles encountered by parents who must protect their son from the malicious paranormal entities who have infiltrated their home. The long-running franchise created by James Wan and Lee Winnell follows the Lambert family and paranormal investigator Elise Rainier through otherworldly worlds, psychic visions, and a non-traditional franchise timeline. The second picture is a sequel to the first, while the third and fourth films are prequels that lead straight into the first. One of the central arenas where this movie plays out in a realm known as The Further. The Further is a huge, dark, and empty dimension that lies somewhere between heaven, earth, and hell. There are many demons that rule and haunt the realm. The Further, according to Elise, is a terrible place where many souls are cursed to live forever. A place where time does not operate, as it does in the real world. Even though it is unimaginably removed from the material dimension, it pervades every inch of it. There is no significant source of light in the further. It reflects the physical world, although distances are difficult to judge, in the further memories of the deceased can likewise change reality. Today, we will take a look at the scariest monsters that exist in the further and the insidious franchise you have been warned. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Red Faced Demon Red Faced Demon is an antagonist in all four movies. Have you ever seen a blood red face in your dream and woken up in a cold sweat? Well, you might have encountered this horrible entity. The man with the fire in his face, also known as the Red Faced Demon, is the main antagonist of the Insidious film series. He first featured as the series' main adversary in the first film, and he subsequently reappears as a key antagonist in Insidious, Chapter 2, Insidious Chapter 3, and The Last Key. It was the creature in the further in the first film over which he rules with an iron fist, and it was the one closest to seizing Dalton's corporal body. Behind a blood-red door in Lambert's attic, the demon lives in a big, red-lit, demonically decorated lair. The red-faced demon is a grotesque and menacing creature, with a black humanoid appearance that is tall and emaciated. He has long spider-like claws, hooves, and a long forked tail, and most of his body is black as coal. Except for long tufts of hair around his ears, he is mostly hairless. Despite the fact that he is naked, he frequently wears silvery metallic claws over his own fingers. His most distinguishing feature is his blood-red face, which contrasts sharply with the rest of his physique. With a broad aquiline nose, sparkling yellow eyes, crooked teeth, and a long forked tongue, his face has a powerful presence. After the fall of the angel, he ruled the further, a location halfway between heaven and hell. He is a malevolent and violent entity, according to what is known about him. Only his victims and his minions are ever seen in his lair. Therefore, he appears to be rather territorial. According to Elise, devils, like him, are just interested in possessing a body in order to inflict suffering onto others. He is far more powerful as a natural demon than any other ordinary human soul. He's in charge of his own section of the further. With a crushing backhand hit, he can send grown adults flying, and he also possesses incredible telekinetic abilities. He can channel a larger degree of power than other typical souls in the physical world when he possesses corporal bodies, even if only partially blasting people seated around a table by just slamming his conduit's palm on it or thrashing adult men with little apparent effort. Being the closest to possessing Dalton's body demonstrates his greater strength over human seekers. Renee first notices the demon when she hears it talking over the baby monitor. We witness this entity reappear as an evil being in every film, allowing us to get a closer look at it while seeing its desire to cause mayhem. Wheezing Demon, the man who can't breathe from Insidious Chapter 3. The second demon we have for you is a terrifying one. 
Don't let the name fool you. The Wheezing Demon, also known as the Man Who Can't Breathe, is the main enemy of Insidious Chapter 3 and is a very dangerous and wicked demon from the further. A breathtaking mask and a filthy, ruffled medical gown are worn by the Wheezing Demon. With a wiry and deceptively weak-looking frame, he's lean and malnourished, practically bald. His eyes are pale blue, his skin is decaying, and his feet appear to be covered with a thick layer of tar, which along with the black footsteps he leaves behind, firmly verifies his existence. He has a lipless mouth that appears to be a gaping hole under his breathing mask. Despite his terrifying look, he has the ability to transform into human-like appearance. He's also notorious for producing wheezing noises, which explains his alternate moniker. His look shows that he died as a result of a respiratory disease, hence the breathing mask and hospital gown. The Wheezing Demon is a violent and corrupted demon that controls a portion of the Further, notably the Further version of the Brenner family's apartment complex. The Wheezing Demon prefers to drag living souls into the Further for him to toy with and feed on as a threat to many spirits in the Further that wish to return to the land of the living. He is powerful as seen by his ability to easily throw Quinn out of her bed, scale walls, shapeshift, remove objects from people's bodies invisibly, infiltrate brains, and create illusions in the living world. He he heard Quinn's voice in the movie when she sought to contact her deceased mother. Quinn was then terrorized by him. Later, he takes her to the further where he feeds on her soul. Elise, Spex, Tucker, and Sean, Quinn's father, all attempted to stop him and save Quinn. The wheezing demon is infamous for possessing his victims and compelling them to commit suicide so that he can suffocate them forever in the darkness. Quinn is briefly possessed by him and he attempts to murder herself with a box cutter. His purpose is to push people to suicide and keep them as his pets in the dark. He tries to persuade Elise to commit suicide by posing as her late husband Jack who committed suicide himself and inviting her to join him. Elise, on the other hand, recognizes that Jack would never ask her to do such a thing and attacks the demon. Elise fights the wheezing demon valiantly and returns Quinn to her body. Quinn is apprehended by the demon just as she is about to return. Elise and the others join hands with Quinn on the physical realm to psychologically encourage her and aid her soul in overcoming the wheezing demon alone. The wheezing demon is defeated when Quinn's mother, Lilith, appears in response to Elise's pleas for help and assists her daughter in defeating the demon. Quinn regains her wits in the further and then rapidly takes the demon's respirator from his lips, rendering him unable to breathe and slaying him for good. Key Face, the man with the keys, the main antagonist of Insidious, the last key. This one arguably has the most grotesque face out of them all. The main antagonist of Insidious, the last key, is Key Face, also known as the key bearer or the man with the keys. His face is gaunt and skeleton-like, with sharp cheekbones, sunken eyes, and no lips or nose. He has long, dark, greasy hair on the sides of his head, but none on the top. He's tall, gray, and thin, but he has a swollen tummy that makes him look like a corpse. Long Long, translucent strands of flesh, almost like slime, appear to link his arms to the sides of his chest. His fingernails, which are metallic keys of various forms that he uses to lock individuals in the further or to lock their voices in, are his most distinguishing feature. The key bearer appears to enjoy inflicting agony on others. In his case, he does it by keeping spirits as pets, which he then locks in his cave with his powers. He doesn't appear to be doing it for a sadistic feeling of enjoyment, as he feeds on the bad emotions that pulse from other people's pain. In the further, the key bearer also appears to be hell-bent on opening all doors. The key bearer's two main skills are activated by looking the victim in two different locations on the body. The first locking appears to silence its victims, and in some cases causes a lock to appear around their necks in the actual world. The second locking appears to lock the victim within the further, preventing them from escaping, and may also result in genuine physical harm, as Melissa experienced when she was locked twice. To survive, he must feed on negative emotions, which he obtains from people by inflicting pain and interfering with their lives. He also looks for those that have a lot of resentment or anger so he can use them. He possesses superhuman strength and the ability to teleport. The Key Bearer haunted a young Elise Rainier before she fully realized her ability. The Key Bearer fools Elise into unlocking a door in the further that he himself 
couldn't open when her father sends her down to the basement as a punishment. Audrey Rayner, Elise's mother, goes down to the basement and is strangled by the key bearer. It then begins to feed on the wrath of Elise's father, Gerald Rayner. The key bearer coerces Gerald into kidnapping nurses and keeping them in the basement to be tortured and killed before hiding their bodies and belongings in a ventilation shaft. Using his powers to infiltrate Gerald's psyche, in the end, he is defeated by Elise. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? The Bride in Black was a minor antagonist of the first three part of the movie. The Bride in Black isn't a bride. The Bride in Black and the Old Woman are the aliases of Parker Crane, a serial killer, who used to dwell in the Further. He was a minor adversary in Insidious Chapter 3 and the main antagonist in Insidious Chapter 2. He was also a secondary antagonist in Insidious Chapter 3 and the primary antagonist in Insidious Chapter 2. Parker Crane is an elderly guy who was abused as a child by his mother. He began his spiral into madness by being forced to dress as a girl and take the name Marilyn. Later, under the alias The Bride in Black, Crane became a mass murderer. According to his medical records, Parker Crane was a tall, pale, balding man in his late 60s with brown eyes. He wore a black bridal gown with a veil over his face and black gloves as The Bride in Black. Crane wore facial paint and a blonde wig to imitate an elderly woman. He holds a candle during his first appearance in Insidious. Parker Crane was one of the most powerful forces in the Insidious series, as a former serial killer and a terrible spirit. He was known as the serial killer, the bride in black, while he was a human killing a total of 15 people. He had adequate strength to subdue his victims despite the fact that he was old when he committed most murders. He kept his physical strength and obtained eternal life as a spirit in the Further. Crane remained in the Further since then, and like all ghosts and demons in that domain, he had a strong desire to return to life. When a teenage Josh Lambert discovered his ability to astral project, Crane would have a chance to come back to life. Josh's mother, Lorraine, could see the effects of Josh's talents in many images, with Crane growing closer and closer to Josh in each one. Lorraine was so afraid that she sought out psychic Elise Rainier. When Josh returned to the Further in the second film to save his son Dalton, he ran into Crane again, but this time he was successful in seizing Josh's body. Outside the Further, Elise quickly found Crane by taking a snapshot of Josh and revealed it to be Crane. The spirit of Crane does not die in the series thus far, only retreats, so maybe the Bride in Black will make a return in the fifth installment. The Ghoul, Long-Haired Demon. He was a secondary antagonist in the first two part of the movie. This entity will give you the creeps and make you nauseous at the same time. Its appearance is positively horrific and nightmare fuel and so are its activities. The long-haired fiend, also known as the ghoul, or the long-haired demon, is the moniker given to the soul of a strange and aggressive man who lives in the further and is a secondary enemy in Insidious Chapter 2 and a minor antagonist in Insidious Chapter 3. The long-haired fiend, unlike the other spirits in the house, is actively hostile and has assaulted the Lambert's family on several times. His appearance and his demeanor suggest that he is a criminal in a previous life and that he died in the further. His face appears to have degraded as a ghost, which is why he is known as the Long-Haired Fiend. He has thin, crackling skin and wears a black leather trench coat. His hair and his eyes are dark. His looks shift from that of a ghoul to that of a scary Long-Haired Fiend. Throughout the Insidious film series, the long-haired fiend appears three times. In his initial appearance, he was spotted pacing outside Dalton's room with other spirits. He was the only one in the room at the time, and he left before Josh came. When the lipstick-faced demon temporarily takes over Dalton's body, the fiend is seen attempting to sexually abuse Renee for the second time. After Elise exercises the demon from Dalton's body, he vanishes. He guards the door leading into the demon's lair for the third time, attempting to overwhelm Josh and capture his his body. Josh almost succeeds, but thanks to Elisa's support, he is defeated and sent back into the darkness. Doll Girl, the ghost of a teenage girl existing in the further with her family. Dolls have been a favorite for ghosts and demons to inhabit and some of the best known horror movies center around haunted dolls, but this one is something else altogether. The Doll Girl is a ghost of a teenage girl who lives with her family in the further. In the further, she and her family are doomed to relive their horrific deaths. 
When you stare at her wide-eyed smile, you'll undoubtedly get the creeps. Her clothing, as well as that of her family, suggests that she was born in the 1950s. The family themselves promotes the ideal family cliché of the time. After murdering her family, the doll girl wears an unnerving smirk. The doll girl's motivations for killing her family may have been due to insanity based on her facial expression. Josh enters the further and discovers a replica of his home, which he explores. In this realm, he comes face to face with the doll girl's family in the living room. The mystery family appears to be active at first, but as Josh approaches, they come to a halt. Josh continues his inquiry by entering the dining room, where he discovers the doll girl seated at the table with a loaded revolver. Josh interrogates the spirit, but she does not. The three gunshots ring out and the doll girl vanishes from her perch, reappearing in the living room. Having murdered her entire family while the doll girl grins sinisterly at her work. Josh goes upstairs, but the doll girl and her family comes to him one last time, as he does so. They all smirk at Josh as if they found some form of amusement in their punishment. The doll girl and her family are never seen again after that. Quite an unnerving interaction. A fifth installment has already been confirmed in Sidious 5 2022. Wanting to see more of these horrifying demons? Fear not. A fifth movie in the franchise has been announced. This fifth installment will take a fresh approach, with certain fan favorites returning. In addition, in Sidious 5 will be Patrick Wilson's directorial debut, which is exciting in and of itself given his connection to the series. According to Bloomhouse Jason Bloom, in Sidious 5 will hit theaters sometime in 2022, and we are are very psyched. The film will be a direct sequel to Insidious Chapter 2, which ended with the Lambert brothers being hypnotized to make them forget about the Further and its demonic inhabitants. The new film picks up 10 years after the events of the sequel, with a father and a son combo dealing with the fallout. The film will look at a grown-up, college-going Dalton, and we can't wait to see what sinister concoctions the creators have up their sleeves. This is a good time to sit and binge-watch all the movies in the series, so that you're prepared and ready for the horror fest that is about to come. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that icon button and the thumbs up. That way you can continue getting amazing videos from Marvelous Videos just like this one. Thank you for joining us here on Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Ayer.